I definitely want to give Dutton a sibling, although Chris and I joke all the time when Dutton is, you know, uh, being a handful. We're like, you better straighten out or you're not going to get a sibling. You know? Has bringing a new baby into the house, has it put um, a strain on your marriage? Because I know for me, definitely, you know, in the first few months, you know, you're in this newborn haze and you're yeah. constantly just focusing on the baby that you can't really focus too much on each other. And sometimes sure. you got to get lost in the shuffle a little bit. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you're sleep deprived and you're stressed and you're anxious, you might have a certain tone to your voice that maybe you wouldn't normally have or, or less patience, you know? So I think it's just for us, um, I, I don't know if it's been like a strain, but there's definitely been times where like I've had to apologize or or he's had to, you know, apologize. Or like for instance, when he was, he was touring a lot about a month ago. And when he got back, I left him alone with Dutton for a couple of days, you know, just running errands, trying to get my work done. And he was like, oh my gosh, I just, I guess I, I knew it was hard, but I didn't fully know. So I'm so sorry that I was traveling. I feel so bad. And I'm like, you know what? They're, it, it just is what it is. And I think just being able to apologize and just, uh, again, lending ourselves the grace that we need during this time, but then also extending that to each other has been really important. Totally. I mean, what surprised you the most about uh, postpartum that you weren't expecting? Because yeah. nobody, nobody prepares you for that. <laughs> no, no one. Prepared. I feel like you're so focused on the delivery and like the actual birth and just getting through pregnancy. and. I didn't really think about the postpartum aspect um, at all. And there's the whole healing for the first six weeks. That was a whole thing. And um, I didn't really understand what postpartum anxiety fully was or, you know, postpartum that can lean like depression and how real those things are. I mean, you're going through so many changes just in life in general, bringing this human into your home and trying to figure that whole thing out. And then also like, on a physical level, you're going through all these hormonal changes. So for me, I've struggled with postpartum anxiety and just constantly feeling, you know, like not really myself. So I've sought the help of friends and um, I've kind of taken steps to help address that. And I'm feeling a lot better now, but yeah, it's a very real thing and it's a struggle. And it's something that, you know, you don't really know what you're going to face because everyone's so different, but I'm very thankful that it is a conversation that's now, you know, happening in a public, in a public way. I feel like it makes, it made me at least feel far less alone or it, mm -hmm. that something was wrong with me or something. I didn't feel that way at all. No, totally. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, you hear about postpartum depression a lot, but I don't feel like you hear a lot about postpartum anxiety. True. Um, and it, and it's, it is, it's definitely a real thing. I know a good friend of mine, she, she went through the same thing and she's like, I can't even let my kids touch like a counter because like the germs are freaking me out. She's like, I get like anxiety about some, like something like that, you know, is that kind of like where your headspace was at? Yes. I think, you know, I think for us all, the last two years has been just weird and crazy and, and feeling like sometimes we're in this state of chaos and not knowing what, you know, the next day is going to look like. And especially from a health perspective, obviously. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you have this little tiny human that seems so fragile. And so, yeah, I think it's a combination of all of the above. And I tend to, by nature, be more of a warrior. So I'm not surprised <laughs> that this is where I'm at. But yeah, you just love them so much and you want to do everything to protect them. Sometimes it can, you know, get to the point where it's an unhealthy worry. And that's kind of where I was at. So I'm thankful that I've, I'm taking steps to, you know, just learn to trust that he's going to be okay and lean on Chris and lean on the support system that I have um, and feeling I'm feeling a lot better. So, but yeah, it's a journey. It's, mm. it, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. And I'm sure with baby number two, I'll be like, oh, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> totally. No, my son is baby number two. And I'm like, he's fine. Yeah. He's good. <laughs> he's totally good. Um, I mean, speaking of that, I mean, are you guys planning on having more kids in the future? Obviously, I know he's only four months old. You're like, girl, give me some time. Yeah. But, <laughs> but do you plan on having a, a big family? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not sure how many for, uh, you know, in terms of like two or three, but uh, I definitely want to give Dutton a sibling. Although Chris and I joke all the time when Dutton is, you know, uh, being a handful, we're like, you better straighten out or you're not going to get a sibling, you know? <laughs> but no, for sure. I grew up with three siblings. I, 
I hope that that's in our, um, that we're blessed with another baby because yeah. eventually, yes, we do want another. And I want to give Dutton, you know, the, the love. And I mean, my siblings are my best friends. So I mm -hmm. definitely want that for him.